is a presentation of Real Wise Productions and Comi Media Incorporated. Kendrick Lamar performs Not Like Us in concert five times. <laughs> Next on Mentality. <laughs> Welcome to another installment of Mentality, where iron sharpens iron in the realm of health, wealth, mental health, entrepreneurship, love, and brotherhood, all from a man's perspective. I am one of the co-hosts of this program called Johnson, a.k.a. The Mad Scientist, EP Extraordinaire, and the EP of all EPs. And I am joined, as always, by the other co-host of this program. The man is known as Wiseall. The man who's known as Mr. Stuck in My Mind. The man who is also known as King Petty. And the man that's also known as F. Boston. Your boy and mine, W-I-Z-E, a.k.a. Wise El Jefe. How you doing, my man? I'm doing good, my brother. I'm doing good. Can't complain. Robert F. Kennedy failed to qualify for the upcoming debate this week on CNN, leaving President Joe Biden and former President Donald Trump to face off with one another and no one else stood during the stage with them. The deadline to qualify for the debate was midnight Eastern Daylight Time Thursday, this past Thursday. To qualify, candidates must, quote, appear on a sufficient number of state ballots to reach the 270 electoral votes of uh, vote thresholds to win the presidency close quote and receive at least 15 percent in four qualifying national polls prior to the eligibility deadline according to cnn news release kennedy had received at least 15 percent in three qualifying polls and was on the ballot in six states making them eligible for only 89 electoral college votes according to CNN. Now, my question to you, sir, is what does this say about an independent's chances at making a dent in the Democrat-Republican stronghold? Uh, no shot in the Like, you make these numbers ridiculously hard, giving these people no opportunity to, to get any kind of recognition so that people can see that there's a third option out there. Um, they don't want that. They just want the two-party system. They want to continue to push this two-party system down, down our throats. Um, and it's bull****. We should have as many options as possible. This should not just be two horses in this race because they both suck. So when, when we're in a situation where both candidates suck balls, we, we just, we're, we're just in a rough situation and it's just not looking right for the next four years either way you look at it we we're, we're genuinely screwed like we're really <laughs> from one type of race to another you have a guy in marty dolan who is looking at the possibility of trying to unseat the popular representative alexandria Ocasio Cortez, and he wants to represent the New York's 14th district 
And of course, that includes parts of the Bronx and Queens. Now, Dylan describes himself as a progressive, but he describes AOC as, quote, a radical, close quote. That's a term he reserves for AOC, who right now is the most popular member of the squad, which is made up of the most liberal politicians in Congress. Now, Dolan is betting that New Yorkers sick of AOC's stance on democratic policies have become a flashpoint within the party. And they will vote for him instead of her. And the upcoming primary, which will be, as of this recording, in a few days. Is Dolan a better option for the Bronx and Queens than AOC? Uh, no. <laughs> Dolan probably never spent a, a, a night in the Bronx or Queens. <laughs> it was like the last guy before then who was living in Virginia, but representing that district. Yes, yes. <laughs> before AOC took over? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, at least at least she represents. She's from the district. She's from the yeah. district. Yeah, she's from the area. Yeah, Dolan, where, where have you been? Where, where have you been, Dolan? Huh? You just think? Do you think this is a, this? You think this is a spot she's just gonna give up, bro? She's a fighter. You're in for a fight, and uh, you're gonna lose. Um, because she's one of the most. Listen, people might not agree with her views, mm -hmm. but she knows what she's talking about. It's, it's, um, to me, she is the anti, anti Marjorie Taylor Greene. And, mm -hmm. Her, her, and Jasmine Crockett are the future of the Democratic Party. Strong, independent women who voice who who voice their opinion and don't care what anyone thinks. The intrigue surrounding who former President Donald Trump will pick as his running mate grew last Thursday after political observers noticed a website combining one of those candidates with Trump's redirects to the former president's campaign website. Now, the ones that are, are on tap for being a vice presidential candidate, the vice presidential candidate, I've mentioned one of them, Marco Rubio, also mentioned another one in Tim Scott. Uh, a long, a long, long, long shot is Byron Donald's who is a congressman, Republican congressman, and you have Governor Point Eight Percent. Eight percent, Doug Burke. It looks like there's talk that he actually might be the running mate for Donald Trump, and he seems to have what it takes to be that guy. And it seems like come three weeks from now, when the uh, so he has our, no opinion. So he has no opinion. Oh. He's just a puppet. He'll do as as his master tells him, basically. Oh. Right? That's what you're saying? Oh, wow. Yes, Master Trump, what you need me to do? Oh. You need me to fan your balls, whatever? Oh, no. Oh, wow. <laughs> Oh, goodbye, point double governor point eight percent. Hello, Trump's puppet. But I shall ask this question to you: Do you think governor point eight percent, or for those who don't know who that is, that is the North Dakota governor Doug Burgum? That is what Wise calls him, governor point eight percent, because he only could garner that much when he was a presidential nominee and candidate on the campaign trail. Is he on the inside track to be Donald Trump's running mate? Um, if you mean lackey, um, oh. someone who who will not stand up to Donald Trump, who will be, um, let's say, uh, have no balls. Um, you might as well, might as well give it to one to South Dakota. I think she got more balls than he does. So, um. 
yeah, yeah, no. Um, they, that, he's just there to be a yes man. You can't give him Marco Rubio because Marco Rubio and him they will bump heads on occasion. Yeah, Tim Scott, will. token Negro, has a little opinion of himself as well. Um, so you want to give him someone who's not going to want to match his ego. Here comes Governor Point Eight Percent. Um, here comes Governor Point Eight Percent. He wasn't seen on stage at any of the debates, and if he was, it was like at the end and end of the stage. Um, I don't even I don't even remember him speaking. I don't know what his voice sounds like. Not the Honestly, I don't even know what he looks like. Stage. Um, oh so he is the ideal running mate for. Donald Trump. He said that. Yeah, he, can't, he can't can't get any worse. Can't get any worse. This this like I said, this party is in shambles. They don't they 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 have no unity. And that is why they are struggling to even find a, a, a suitable suitable vice president. Is anyone you put in there, it's just not worth it. They're not worth it. What does does Doug eight percent have to do with running office? He, he how many people are in the Dakotas? <laughs> Why do you have to mention it that way? Oh my. Okay, we so go back, we go back to this because if you add up both of the Dakotas, they still don't add up to New York State. Well, heck, they don't even add up to Brooklyn. I mean, seriously. We yeah, we discussed this, and, yeah. and so, what the f- do you know about really running a state? You run a state of less than a million people. Another candidate that is up for uh, vice presidential candidacy is uh, U.S. Senator uh, J.D. Vance. So you have him, who you actually said, he you said Diddy Vance, not Diddy Vance, <laughs> J.D. Oh. Vance. Oh, Diddy. J.D. Vance. Oh, okay. Diddy Vance. <laughs> We're just getting started. Mentality will return. This is a BS3 Network presentation. do a TED talk but I don't have anything to talk about yet. I'm getting there. Life is for the living. We're not here that long. You can learn anything you want to learn without any money spent. What do I really enjoy? What do I really want out of life? I am your host W-I-Z-E. Are you in a life holding pattern? Well this is for you. Welcome to the Stuck In My Mind podcast. Live every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday at 4 p.m. Central. Drew Willingham. In this case, yeah, you put the blame on Kyle Shanahan for apparently not preparing the team enough for the overtime rules, supposedly. Cole Johnson. Peyton was considered the winner, and he was the darling of all darlings for Gerald. With a special appearance by Tyrone Alizé McDummy. Ain't nobody calling me. Text delete. Join these two football enthusiasts as they give you total football talk live every Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Central on the Sertoba Media and the Comey Media YouTube channels. Welcome back to Mentality, where men are men, and I said what I said, men are men. With Wise Halefe, I am Cole Johnson, and Juneteenth is a wonderful celebration that we that we had, that now was once was a Texas celebration, now it's a national federal holiday, but we're not talking about Juneteenth, we're talking about what happened 
the night on Juneteenth. And that was a special performance, a special concert in a special area, at least by the person who was the headliner. Now, who was this headliner and what was this concert? Well, welcome to Celebrity Stock. Pulitzer Prize winning rapper Kendrick Lamar. Oh, he definitely is repping the West. <laughs> the Cotton California native returned to the stage for the Pop Out Ken and Friends concert at the Kia Forum this past Wednesday for Juneteenth. The sold out concert, which features about 16,000 fans in attendance, and it was streamed live on Amazon Prime Video. It comes a month, of course, after the fiery rap beef he had with. Canada's own Drake. Though he opened his set with the diss track Euphoria, the night was more really about Los Angeles pride as fellow California uh, born musicians like Tyler the Creator, Steve Lacey, former label mates from the supergroup Black Hippie, being Schoolboy Q, J Rock and Ab Soul, Ty Dolla Sign, the man who created the beat to Not Like Us, DJ Mustard, YG, Roddy Rich and Dom Kennedy all performed at the venue that night. But the set wasn't without a final dagger or two or three or four or five. <laughs> Following California Love, performing it alongside Dr. Dre, who, of course, is a Southern California native as well, he probably began by saying, I see dead people. And that began the first of five performances of the big time mega hit, Not Like Us. <laughs> oh, yes. And so the Pulitzer Prize winner went on to perform it five times, telling the crowd between the encore performances, quote, y'all ain't going to let anyone disrespect the West Coast, huh? Close quote. Now, during the final encore, the rapper brought the night's performers on stage with individuals from various L.A. neighborhoods and gangs. And that was done as a show of unity. And they actually were on stage. They took a it took many pictures, actually. I think it was like a minute's worth of pictures that uh, they took with Kendrick Lamar in the middle of the of, of the gathering. And a good time literally was had by all. Now, I'll begin by asking this, sir. How important was the Pop Out Ken and Friends concert to the Los Angeles culture? Um, I guess it's a, it's a big thing for 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 the Los Angeles culture. Um, with all the gang violence and all that stuff that's been going on, but um, I'm more interested in the fact that one this song has united. The West Coast so tight, yo. Man. All right. For for those who didn't see the performance, because I got a chance to see it. I'm telling you. Uh, now, my, my two favorite songs from Kendrick Lamar is Swimming Pools and All Right. And he performed All Right and Swimming Pools probably about the first. It was in the first half, like, like a third of the way through his set. He performed them back to back. And, you know, the crowd was hyped for All Right, and the crowd was hyped for for, for Swim Pools. Of course, in the beginning, you know, he says, you know, um, pull up, drank, and, of course, the crowd screamed, drank loudly. And they sang, we're going to be all right when it was all right, loudly. But, man, when it came to the, probably struck a chord, and it was probably a minor and not like us, the place was deafening. It was <laughs> loud. I mean, it was, it literally was like a, it, I mean, it literally was like a celebration that you never thought you would see. Oh my God. Yeah. It, it was beautiful to watch, but it was hilarious to, to think this is a diss track. Mm -hmm. And you're having 16,000 people sing it like it's one of those unity 
uh, Unity songs where they, they find themselves, you know, I was at the end of my rope, but this gives me hope. And they were singing it or they were rapping the song similar to that type of energy. Yeah. Oh. Beautiful and thing to watch. And that's why it's amazing to me that this this song mm-hmm. is as hot as it is as it's, if it's a regular song. Like, yeah, it's like a regular pop song. Yeah. Seriously, even my grandson loves it. <laughs> oh, look! Shout out to you, DJ Mustard. You you hooked up. You lace Kendall Lamar with that beat. That was one nice beat. Oh man, goodness gracious! And then, of course, Kendrick, you freaked it, but but you freak almost every beat that you get. So, mm-hmm. Christ. what type of statement? So, before I ask this question, now, I think for the last performance of Not Like Us, uh, you had uh, Kendrick Lamar inv- invite so many people on the stage, and there were former and current NBA stars that went on the, uh, went to the stage with them. And in attendance, but he didn't get on stage, was Le- uh, was LeBron James as well. But you had DeMar DeRozan. You had Russell Westbrook. And you had those that are like actually getting up on stage, dancing with the whole throng to not like us. What type of statement does this make for NBA stars to attend the concert and to just simply get on stage and just bug out and dance the way they did? Listen, it, it <laughs> uh, NBA that just goes to show you Drake is not uh, everyone's favorite. <laughs> you know what's messed up about that? Well, Drake is a part owner of the Raptors, so you, <laughs> you have that as a conundrum. <laughs> He began the set with Euphoria, and he changed a couple of lyrics uh, to it. In fact, he mentioned the ring that we saw with Drake in Family Matters, which was actually Tupac's ring that he bought at an auction for a million dollars. And one of the lyrics basically was saying that uh, if you give Tupac's ring back to, to Kendrick, he might give Drake a little bit of respect. But we all know that's not going to happen. No. So he performed Euphoria to begin the show. He performed 616 in L.A. in the middle of the show. He performed he performed his verse in Like That uh, uh, right before he brought out uh, Dr. Dre. And, of course, after Dr. Dre, he did not like us. Now, he decided not to do uh, Meet the Grams. And we talked on this platform saying that probably was the weakest of the five songs he did. Yeah. But I think he, but but they but to me it was still fire because it had a but it had a message to it. And I understood the rationale behind it. Yeah. It was more of it was more of a it was more of a strategic play than wow, that's a bop. So I got that. So I wasn't expecting I wasn't expecting like what I expected would not like us. Because I was hoping the next thing he dropped would be like that. And gosh, it was. So do you believe Kendrick Lamar should have used the Drake diss tracks in the concert? Mm. Yeah, why not? They're hot. People just people want to listen. People want to hear it. First of all, I'm sure everybody wanted to hear not like us when they, when he they knew he was gonna perform. Mm-hmm. It's the hottest song out there. Yeah. Yeah. You'd be an idiot not to. Yeah, and one thing that Kendrick Mark is Kendrick Lamar is not is an idiot. The dude dude's a sharp mind. All right, so this concert was one where you had, I guess you could say it was a a hip hop moment, a a hip hop stamp, because it was a straight hip hop performance, a straight a, a straight hip hop uh, gathering, and it just had that feel where it was like, well, you know, it's. It is it's not it's not truly art, and I'm not saying that hip hop isn't art, hip hop is art, but when I'm saying it wasn't elaborate. Mm-hmm. You know, it it wasn't it, you know, the performance wasn't uh you had like 250 dancers and you had 
uh, and you had a, a, a band of 25 people. No, it was literally two turntables and microphone. Of course, you need to see the two turntables. Yeah. And it was an MC on stage spitting. That's what I mean by it was just a hip hop feel to the whole thing. What did this concert mean for one, Drake's future, and two, the future of the hip hop culture? Uh, I think Drake is going to be fine. I'm saying, yeah. um, Ether was was a who uh, uh, was a fire track, and, and Jay still recovered and and yeah. did what he did. So, and I think Ether is a, the best this album, this track ever. And I'm a Jay fan, and I'm a big Jay fan. Yeah, I know. So, um, Brooklyn, I think I you, you can't help but be a Jay fan. Yeah. I, th- I think Drake is going to be fine. Uh, the, this is this is just. Put Kendrick above him as the best hip hop artist out besides my boy J. Cole. Um yeah. Who yeah, who's still, he's still cold. Yeah. Even even to the end of this moment, he's still cold. And people can people say, well, he he was he was being weak for a bowing out. No, he wasn't. Nope. No, he wasn't. He's like, yeah, this is not my fight. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. He actually did a man thing where it's like, I put it out there, but yeah, it's not really my fight. They they can go at it. They can go at it. It's not really for me. And bowed out. Yep. Now I will somewhat push back on you and saying that either is the the best diss track ever. I love it though. It's one. It's one of the most incendiary I've ever heard. But Ice Cube's no Vaseline. Oh yeah, no Vaseline. He was kidding about no Vaseline. He did NWA dirty. He did them all dirty. He I was like, NWA dirty. I was like, you you had a diss track that downed five <laughs> men. The only one he did. The only one he did in this on that album was DOC. DOC is the only one. Yeah. Yep. He capped every last one of them and the manager. I'm like, oh, yep. oh man. <laughs> Mentality will be back in two and two. Life. Scratching and clawing to overcome adversities in life. Family. That's what I love about our children. Mm -hmm. God instilled that in us, and thank God they carry on that torch. Marriage. We struggled in different ways, naturally, as husband and wife. And God. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear what man can do unto Mm -hmm. me. Join the husband and wife team of Ben Southerth Jr. and Irene Southerth as they give you the full scope of life. BS3 Network proudly presents the Suds Are Us podcast live every Saturday at 4 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Central. Join Ryan McCarthy. I became a Jets fan because Kurt the Frog was my favorite Muppet because he was green. And the Jets wore green. That's how I became a Jets fan. And Dustin Henry. ESPN is cashing all in on let's pay a few personalities and we'll just kind of fill in the gaps. As they walk you through all of the world of sports from their perspective. The Albany Empire, it's a literal circus. No credentials required. Where, Ryan... Say the tag. Where you don't need a press pass to talk sports. Live every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central on YouTube and where you can find podcasts. Welcome back to Mentality, where this is the platform and the place created for all men. With YZLFA, I am Cole Johnson, and we talked about politics earlier, but we're going to talk about politics 
in a different twist, in a different bent. And the reason why we are is because of the move that we're going to be seeing this summer. Welcome to Politically Speaking. <music> All right, content creators, get ready. The Democratic National Committee is giving content creators who are active on various apps a chance to showcase their online personas at their convention in August housed in Chicago. Uh, social media influencers can receive media credentials similar to that of traditional news outlets. The party announced this week, which will give them access to key spaces at the United Center. That's where the convention will be held, but that will be just one of the locations where the convention activity though, will take place. They will also be allowed to connect with surrogates and VIPs. The new initiative is just one of the many ways the Biden campaign, which has been dogged by concerns about the president's age, has taken strides to reach younger voters amid the changing and fractured media landscape. Back in February, for instance, the campaign debuted its official TikTok account. Mm. Mm. The uh, <laughs> numerous polls have shown that Biden is losing the support of younger voters for handling his Israel and Hamas conflict. But this move, though, is considered to be something to reach across, well, the age aisle, so to speak. I mean, heck, we just talked about Kendrick Lamar in uh, the, that same TikTok uh, platform used Euphoria to down Donald Trump. So there you go. My first question to you, since of course we both are content creators, and I figured this would be something that would be right down your right down your alley. How much does this addition of content creators and social media influencers being credentialed like traditional media change the traditional media's role? Uh, doesn't give them the monopoly anymore. Now we we us us um smaller content creators are given an opportunity to to go represent our our, our people, represent who we are, and mm -hmm. re represent our audiences. And so I, I think it's a it's a great thing. Um I wish Ben could get some credentials for us, uh, for I might ask him, let's see if, if BS3 Network can get some credentials. I would go to Chicago and, and and go speak to politicians. It's, it's some, like this is something doing this platform with you has made me a little bit more confident in what and and what I speak about on politics because I, I do my research. I start reading articles. I so I would I would feel that it, I would love to represent what we do in mentality mm -hmm. and go and, and go to the convention. Wouldn't you? Oh yeah, I definitely would love that opportunity and. In inside baseball here, one of the reasons why I figured this connection would work was because I knew you were up on things. And so I figured, all right, I'll nudge you closer into what you already know. And voila, <laughs> we've had content go with politics ever since. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, and I'm glad you said that. So it leads in this next question beautifully. Are content creators professional enough to represent the rest of us well. Yes, because we work just as hard. We we do our research, some of us more than others, but we work hard. A lot, a lot, of, a lot of content creators I work with do their research, work hard, aren't just doing this for popularity, they're doing this because they love it. There's so much to it. Like, we're much more in tune with the streets than, than the media is. You're right. We're more in touch with the people. I speak to regular people every day because I'm a regular person. Mm -hmm. Media outlets can't say that. That's true. That is true. Considering that I work at one of the biggest national media outlets, and I can actually say that from this end, you're right. You're right. Uh, they don't. 
And I've actually got a chance to understand how the streets are because of doing shows like this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. So August comes and we have traditional media and social media influencers and they actually do well. Um, what happens in, in, in your mind, if you were to actually see this unfold, what happens if this stint of having social media influencers and content creators credentialed if it is successful? It's, it's the change for content creators. It, it changes the landscape for all of us. It really gives us that that power where we can be like, all right, we're, we're for real. We're here, we're here to stay. Um, y'all want to y'all run ads with us? Y'all wanna, it, it helps us in so many different ways. It helps mm-hmm. us recognize us as legit, first of all. Of course. And then it also helps us with ad space, with ad, with 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 giving revenue for for really growing our our content and stuff like that, because now we have really truly media credentials. So now we're reaching a whole lot bigger audiences. Mm-hmm. And now advertisers are seeing this, and they're like, "Okay, I don't have to spend billions on the network when I can just throw millions to these content creators." And it and it'd be different. Yeah. Yeah. When I saw when I saw this story, I was like, oh my gosh, I think Wise is gonna beam from ear to ear. Just seeing one of the biggest hopes that I've heard in our conversation that we have talked about in our our individual and even our shared goals in how this this content creation space would be. One of the things I remember you saying was you wanted to have this be taken as seriously as traditional media. And here it is. The opportunity is here. Mm -hmm. So how should social media influencers and the traditional media work together in this upcoming convention? Or should they work together at all? Yeah, why not? Why not? Share content. Share. like That's one thing that's great about us now is that we're able to share content with working, collaborating with other content creators mm-hmm. and building relationships with other content creators. A lot, a lot, that's what a lot of your networks need to start doing is reaching out to these content creators and hiring them. Mm-hmm. We're the future. Yeah. 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 You're right. Start, start syndicating some of these shows. Yeah. Yeah, that's that 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 is what that's I'm where, saying. That's where that's where networks like BS3 network and all these mm-hmm. other places, all these other show that these TV stations popping up. Mm-hmm. They're going out and they're getting these content creators. Mm-hmm. And they're giving these these people a platform. And they they're keeping in touch with the streets. Yeah. And it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. It is a, it is a beautiful thing. Because I think for the longest time, and, and I think you, you touched on it, and I really believe for the longest time, and, and, and you're correct, I think a lot of people were looking at, at traditional media and they were saying, I'm not being represented. And I think what we were starting to see in traditional media, there was more and more and more people, not just Blacks. There was just more people in general that were saying, I'm not being represented. I'm not being seen. And now you have platforms like this and people like us where people are now starting to say, well, wow, because of you, I am being seen. And when you can have that, I think, yes, when you have the magic. And I think that's where the real power comes. Yeah. Because because I'll, I'll tell you this, traditional media, they want to have that appeal that yes they they have the they have the support of corporate america but they also want to have the appeal that they talk to the streets too absolutely you know do do not get it twisted that is what they want but they can get it a lot better from platforms like this yeah Later, we will.
will have thoughts from the throne. This is Mentality. Are you looking for something to do on your lunch break? Well, there's a show on the BS3 network that has only four words to say to you. We ready. We ready. We ready for JMNE live weekdays at 1 p.m. Eastern, noon Central. Whether it's news, the largest egg producer finds bird flu and chickens at a Texas plant, whether devastating tornadoes rip through the heart of the United States, inspiration, a breast cancer survivor completed the journey of chemotherapy, and now begins a future one of matrimony or sports. Michael Jordan is shown on a photo with Diddy. LeBron James has a video extolling the virtues of a Diddy party. This has been yet another <laughs> Beating a Dead Horse presentation. We got you covered. BS3 Network in association with Comey Media Incorporated proudly present The Morning Shift with Cole Johnson. Live every weekday at 8 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Central. Welcome back to Mentality, where this is the place that is the ultimate masculine safe space. With Wise LFA, I am Cole Johnson, and we talk politics. I think it's time to have a little fun. Um, and I figured that we need to mention this guy because, well, <laughs> uh, some things that he's just done that just makes you laugh. So here is something to ponder. <laughs> In the most subtle, low-key of ways, this 47-year-old revealed his diagnosis of kicking and beating cancer on the BFF's pod when his co-host took note of a scar on his neck. And the person revealing such a thing, Barstool Sports founder Dave Portnoy. Oh, yes. He proudly said, quote, I beat cancer. <laughs> Close quote. He went on to actually say a lot of other things, too, saying, quote, I've had a heart attack, cancer, and stung by bees. Beat it all. I went to a doctor, did a skin thing. They scrape it, and one of them came back cancerous. Got to take it out. Close quote. Now, I will begin by asking this question and rolling off the red carpet to you. How inspired do you feel by Dave Portnoy beating cancer? I'm trying to be nice. I'm trying because I know I, I lost my aunt to cancer. I lost my cousin to cancer, lost another aunt to cancer. I got a cousin now battling cancer. Mm -hmm. So to me, I, I'm serious when it comes to cancer. Of course. Um, Dave Portnoy, we all know how I feel about you. We know I think you're a piece of shit. That being said, even though you are a piece of shit, you do not deserve death upon you. Um, so I'm gonna be the big man 
and say, thank God that your cancer is in remission and you're here yes. for me to still <laughs> talk about. I, I'm grateful for that part. Oh, um, but still, if you <laughs> and you and Boston. And so, yeah. <laughs> Good, good thing that you're, you're cancer free. God bless you, brother. You, you, no one should die that way. No one. You had to slip in the Boston dig. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Portnoy said that uh, he's been actually trying to get people to get notice, uh, to get people to notice that he had a scar on him to actually point out that he did beat cancer saying quote i've been trying to shove it in people's faces close quote now see see what is that is when you say stupid shit like that right <laughs> it's, it's when you say stupid shit like that that it kind of kind of like makes me think maybe cancer should have got him but i digress <laughs> i digress <laughs> God, that is brutal. Oh. Okay. Are you proud of him for beating all of those afflictions of a heart attack and being stung by bees and skin cancer? It was skin cancer? Yeah, it was skin cancer. Man, you should have got stung by more f bees. <laughs> um. <laughs> I wish there were African killer bees that stung your <laughs> <head. laughs> stung by more bees. Oh man. Um heart attack. I need to be careful because that, that could strike me at any time. But um yeah, they for knowing. Man, don't nobody give a f that you survived any sh really. I don't care. Um maybe your 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 team at Barstool cares. Mm -hmm. But um yeah, go f yourself, Dave Portnoy. Right. I, honestly, you, you, the only reason you keep it is, is you want people to, to look. I got a scar. I beat cancer. Shut the f up. <laughs> Get the f out of here, man. Hmm. Go, go, take your, go, take your dicey and and go jump off a bridge or some shit, man. F out of here. Gosh, he was so brutal. <laughs> I hate okay. the fact that we both love pizza. Yeah, he yeah. For those that don't know, Dave Portnoy actually goes uh, to pizzerias around. Well, it used to be around the Boston area. I think now he goes around wherever he lives and rates pizza places. Yeah, I hate that fact. I hate that fact, and I love pizza. I do too. But yeah. Yeah, we got we got something. They why like does that. he why does he seemingly seek this gratuitous attention? I, I that is where I am at a loss. You can't help people from Boston. You just, you just can't help them. They just they just just the, the Bostonians. You can't help people from Boston. You just wow. can't. You can't. You can't. You can't. <laughs> Why can't you help people from Boston? Man? First of all, they can't pronounce <laughs> correctly. <laughs> ah, get the <laughs> out of here. It's car. <laughs> oh, gosh. No. <laughs> no mother camera. Y'all say New Yorkers sound horrible. These mother. In Boston, sound like idiots. Oh my gosh! I remember when my cousin came from Boston, and she came to visit, and she tied, and I'm like, "What's uh -huh. wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Oh no! Not what's wrong with you? Yeah, it's car, not car." <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
if you or I were to have some sort of cancerous affliction and we actually did beat it, you said it earlier. I think we'd be more humble about it. We'd be like, man, yeah. Oh man, I, I would have visited death's front door, but thank God I took care of this. And oh, yeah, no, I, I would have yeah. been like, thank you, Lord, for for saving me, mm-hmm. for giving me opportunity to continue to be on this earth. That's that's it. Not trying to get people to notice my scar. <laughs> it's what oh, it's. <laughs> he tried to get people to notice his what? His scar. <laughs> his scar, you dumb. I think your hatred of Boston would go to another level, but it most certainly has now. Oh my God, this is beautiful. <laughs> oh my goodness uh, oh lord well all i gotta say uh, today poor noy is uh well i'm glad you beat cancer but um unfortunately your commentary still is cancer us yes uh, which is unfortunate but hey we can't do anything about it except report it and have Unfortunately, fun at your expense about it. Oh my gosh. Scare. <laughs> <laughs> And now, thoughts from the throne. This week, I'm in a much better mood. Um, So there will be no shots fired. But, um, Boston. (laughs) The Boston Celtics for winning another NBA championship. I really don't even give a who really won. I did not win one. I really wanted Dallas to win um, because then I wouldn't have to hear about 18 championships, 18 championships. Oh, big deal. You won the first 17, like when there was like 10 teams in the league, please. Um, Good boo, but he calls so curse. Uh, it, it, it pains me when they win. It does. It does. Because <laughs> you Bostonians, that's just suck. You have, <laughs> n- there's nothing humble about you, f- Bostonians. You guys really are full of yourselves. Um, so, yeah, because you got, you got, like Dave Portnoy doing what he's doing. Um, I thought I was not going to fire a shot. I thought it was going to be nice, but I, I in the middle of the thought process, he just changed, and, and it had to be like, you know what, Boston, um, <laughs> Christoph Porzingis, <laughs> Jalen Brown, <laughs> Jason Tatum, <laughs> uh, Mazzolo, Mazula, Mazzolo, whatever the <laughs> his name is, Maz, whatever. Um, <laughs> yeah, Joe whatever. Mazzola, the head coach yeah. of the <laughs> um, Gosh. Um, be my be my Dominican brother, but f- you too, Al Hawford. Um, and um, yeah. So congratulations on your 18th championships, but a big f- you, Boston Celtics. Well, I am happy that Dallas lost, so that makes me happy. And uh, uh, again. I would love for Dallas to continue to lose, but uh, that is not what I'm going to use the thought from the throne on. Um, so for about two months, I've, I've embarked on doing a show called uh, The Morning Shift, and I've done tweaks, and I've done <clears throat> analysis, and I've tried to make sure that the program would be better 
the next day as it was the day before. And it has been a wonderful ride. And I had a conversation before we recorded <clears throat> with someone. And I said to him, I said, you know, when I knew that I was that I was meant to do the morning shift, it wasn't when I had the logo. It wasn't when I knew the content was going to be the way it was or how the show was going to be laid out. I knew I was going to do the show when I knew the purpose of it was to help other people. And it wasn't about helping me. And man, when I understood that, the mission's different. And it's similar, to, it's similar to this show. The mission's different. You know, yeah, I am getting entertainment, obviously, from doing this show. And I get entertainment under doing the morning shift as well. And I get edification from both shows. But when you have a mission that is much bigger than you, you normally tend to do bigger and better and grander things. And that's that's where I am. I know that's where Wise is. And that's where others that I know who are in this content creation space along with us are doing too. It is meant to have us uplift other people, even if it's one another too, because we are people as well. That is the beauty of it all. We're uplifting people with this content. And the beauty of it is the work that we're doing is just getting started. And I can't wait to see what else is in store for how the content that we all provide can uplift all of you out there. And those are thoughts from the throne. All right, sir. Do you have anything else before we let the mentality mentality audience go? No, I'm good. I'm good. I think I've, I've probably pissed off enough people. Say, <laughs> oh my gosh, this was as entertaining as I thought it was going to be. Oh my gosh! Look, everyone out there, thank you for liking, thank you for sharing, thank you for commenting as well, thank you for subscribing, and thank you for hitting that notification bell so you can catch all content that comes and is emanated from the Real Wise TV YouTube channel and the Comey Media Incorporated YouTube channel. We appreciate the love and the support, and we send the love right back out to at you. For Wise LFA, I'm Cole Johnson here to say, in parting, as we always do. Our secret technique is that we always speak with mentality. See you next week. That's Hunter. Those are my thoughts from the throne. <laughs> this episode has reignited my 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 drive and my my hatred towards Boston. Oh Lord, you too much. Oh Lord, that's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs>